Gentlemen, good morning. I'm Jambo. I know it's cold. Uh, I was also feeling it. But it's a great pleasure that I join you today for the groundbreaking listing of this Lin Sisukuk on the unquoted securities platform of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Indeed, a very momentous occasion as we introduce the first Sharia-compliant financial product to the Kenyan exchange. I take this opportunity to congratulate Lindsay Finco Trust, the issuer of the bond for the successful structuring of this remarkable three billion shilling Islamic security with a 15-year maturity marking a pioneering public-private partnership facilitated through our capital markets entirely with locally sourced resources. My recurrent visits to the Nairobi Securities Exchange have each coincided with a significant development crucial for our nation's economic advancement. From the launch of the enhanced NSC marketplace in October 2022, when I came here immediately after the election, and now the Lindsay Sukuk bond. These are not mere coincidences, but reflect a steadfast commitment to fostering a dynamic and inclusive capital market. The NSC stands as a cornerstone in our strategy to mobilize long-term capital that is vital for fueling the programs and projects that are core to our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. In 2022, the government pledged to provide land and horizontal infrastructure for development of affordable housing, substantially lowering construction costs and making it possible and feasible to offer homes at between 30 and 40 percent less the market rates. I challenge the private sector to support national housing and infrastructure projects then. I am delighted by your response and commend your effort in crafting this landmark asset-based security, which has the potential to enhance efficiency in the delivery of our priority projects through optimal financing costs. I am also encouraged that the funds raised from this bond will facilitate the construction of 3,069 affordable housing units thereby generating thousands of jobs across the country, expanding commerce in many aspects of uh, trade, um, uh, aspects of uh, supply, uh, traders, uh, and many other aspects that will bring this together. The structure of Lindsay Sukuk aimed at providing housing at an average of 1.4 million shillings, significantly less than the current average, enables Kenyans to own homes by paying as little as 7,000 for 15 years. This initiative not only makes home ownership more accessible, but also represents a scalable model for investment in our affordable housing program, attracting long-term investors including local pension funds. I'm very happy to listen to Tom Mulwa and what they are doing with uh, Dr. Kili on this space. And I am very happy that today we are launching a product that brings Islamic financing put together by the Nairobi Stock Exchange to facilitate public housing. That, that is the essence of public partnership, public-private partnership. We're using private funds. We're using private funds to deliver public housing. It is the model that will leverage more resources beyond what government can do that private money can facilitate home ownership. Private money can, uh, can, can facilitate public housing. 
in this particular aspect, our security forces will benefit from the housing that is going to be constructed using the resources that we are raising using this Sukuk bond. And it is my commitment uh, to the people of Kenya that housing is going to be a major product. Many people have asked me, why are you using public land to deliver housing? I mean, what else was public land supposed to be used for? Because in many cases, if we don't use public land to deliver public housing, it ends up in the hands of a few other people by other means. So I am committed to making sure that we create more homeowners in Kenya. As, as I have said before, we have a mortgage industry of about 40,000. We can expand that to between one and a half and two million mortgages by making sure that we have housing products that are affordable to the majority of Kenyans. You can only do that if you have innovative mechanisms that allows us to deliver housing and housing products at affordable prices. And I'm very happy that uh, the private sector is coming on board to work with us in this space. As a financial instrument compliant with Islamic law, the Sukuk highlights the importance of Islamic finance in promoting financial inclusion and broadening market access. This aligns with the global move towards more stable and robust economic growth, unlocking Islamic financial assets currently valued at approximately $5 billion. The high demand for Islamic financial products, both domestically and internationally, is evident from the successful issuance of sovereign sukuks in countries like Nigeria, Egypt, and Malaysia. This opens avenues for diversifying our financial resources beyond traditional bonds and loans and enhancing our financial resilience against interest rate volatility. If we were to deliver the same product using a loan, it would cost us interest of 22%. We're getting it at half that amount. So if there is anything in the realm of innovation, this is what it is. That resources that would otherwise be available to us at 22% interest, using this Sukuk product, we get it at 11% interest. And for 15 years, that's really good. I mean, it cannot get better than that. And um, I, I am very confident that, uh, in, in fact, if, if we were to look for such funding, we would get it at 22% for five years. If it was 15 years, that would be a different number. I'm not quite an investment banker like uh, my good peers, but I know that it, 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 it would be a lot different. So um, we are working in the right direction, and, and I want to commend CPF, Liason, and uh, uh, Patrick Mariro from uh, my Ministry of Defense for working on this. With today's listing, the Lindsay Sukuk joins a portfolio of innovative financial instruments on the NSC USP, including the Elam Fahari Income Real Estate Investment Trust and Akon Up Real Estate Investment Trust. However, the absence of a centralized Sharia governance board remains a significant barrier to the broader adoption of Islamic finance. To address this, I ask our financial regulators to collaborate with the national, treasury, and Islamic finance stakeholders to develop a robust regulatory framework that will support the growth of Islamic finance in Kenya, which has tremendous potential to unlock our investment resources and boost our economy. Uh, the people in treasury with the central bank and uh, 
the, all the other stakeholders, including scholars like uh, Lefome and others, should come together and uh, fashion a, uh, a framework that will provide accountability and stability and a framework that will support this endeavor. Our manifesto highlighted the adverse effects of government borrowing on, pro uh, on productive sectors, notably agriculture, leading to increased food imports and heightened vulnerability to global supply shocks. As we are all aware, we are spending close to half a billion, actually 500 million Kenya shillings every year to import food items that we can actually produce. And that is why I took the decisive decision that we are going to support production rather than us trying to subsidize consumption. And the difference has been made. We have significantly reduced imports of food it is my intention that by supporting that productive uh, sector, we can reduce imports, especially of products, food items that we can either grow locally or we can produce and manufacture uh, locally. It will remove the strain on our um, dollar resources, of foreign exchange resources, and it will also help us unlock the potential of our local productivity, local production, local manufacture. We have seen the mobilization of savings through various capital market instruments, including the initial public offer, treasury bonds, corporate bonds, and commercial paper issuance, and introduced innovative products like infrastructure port, green bonds, collect collective investment schemes, real estate investment trusts, commonly known as REITs, asset-backed securities, exchange trade funds, diaspora bonds, and derivatives. Moving forward, we will continue to enhance these efforts, working closely with the NSC to drive our national transformation agenda. Our commitment extends to the privatization of government-owned enterprises as part of our broader economic liberalization program. This will not only stimulate market activity, but also support the government's strategy to divest its stakes in key corporations, enhancing overall market dynamics. As has been said here, and as I made a commitment when I first came to this exchange, uh, the first six companies will be listed here in the next three months, I am told. So before the close of this year, we will have the first uh, six um, uh, 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 companies where we have stake as government listed here for divestiture so that the public can own uh, what government owns now. And I have had cl with clarity how Kenjin became successful, how Safaricom became successful, uh, by being listed at this exchange. Uh, we will be preparing those other companies that you want, and I know which ones that you want, so that uh, we can bring them to this exchange and we can give Kenyans a chance to own part of the wealth of our nation. I, <clears throat> I'm also looking forward, as I have uh, interacted this morning with um, uh, different stakeholders, working with National Treasury, the um, Central Bank, and uh, good companies like Safaricom for us to develop um, retail trading of both uh, shares in the stock exchange and also bonds. And I am looking forward, and I have been assured that maybe in the next three months I will hold somebody to account on that, in the next three months that uh, we are going to see more Kenyans participating in bond trading, in shares trading, in forex trading, and this should be possible online. And um, the CEO of Safaricom has given me his assurance 
that he will use his robust network to make sure that Kenyans have access to a platform where they can do business. We can enhance our e-commerce footprint around Kenya so that as we deliver the last mile connectivity to internet using our digital superhighway infrastructure, that we are now expanding to every ward in Kenya so that we can not only give a chance to young people across Kenya to have access to digital jobs, but also to have access to digital commerce. And among the aspects of digital commerce that I am looking forward to is trading on government bonds, trading on uh, uh, shares at the, at the exchange, and also forex trading, so that uh, the many people who we have made internet and Wi-Fi, the many who have accessed it either on our Wi-Fi hotspots across Kenya or even as we deliver the last mile connectivity with the program we have between the Kenya Power and our Ministry of ICT, as we deliver internet, as we deliver Wi-Fi, as we make it much more accessible, then it can be made useful through access to digital jobs, which we are working around the clock to make sure that's available, and also we can do more e-commerce, more e-trading, more space to trade on government bonds, on government securities, on uh, uh, shares at the stock exchange or at the securities exchange, and many other of, that, of those aspects. I think it would be a very good experience, uh, different from what's going on now, I, I think that platform is being used more, Kusalimiana. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> sometimes, you know, you become the architect of your own uh, troubles. You know, when we delivered the uh, Wi-Fi across Kenya and uh, made it free, we intended it to be used for good purposes for people to access uh, e-commerce space, to work on uh, that internet. But sometimes it is used to send us uh, encouraging messages. <laughs> <laughs> to fulfill our manifesto pledges, we have initiated key economic reforms, including governance improvements under the ownership policy for government-owned enterprises approved by Cabinet in November last year. This policy is said to enhance corporate governance and accountability, aligning the standards of state corporations closely with those of listed companies. I am very proud with the development that is going on, for example, at the Kenya Power, where today uh, those in the private sector um, today have their own directors, and we are seeing improvements in the governance of uh, uh, state-owned enterprises that are listed at the exchange, a very positive move that is uh, adding value to us. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, in a long time, Kenya Power is actually going to have a significant profit uh, this year. That, that's really commendable. And I want to thank the management of Kenya Power for what they are doing. And, and that speaks to all the other uh, government entities that we will be listing at the exchange. I want to give you my commitment that uh, we will be frugal and we will, with a lot of clarity, deal with the challenges of accountability, making sure that public resources are spent for the intention for which they have been um, uh, planned for, and that those who come in the way of government resources, misappropriation, or loss shall be held to account. In fact, I did propose in my statement a few days ago that we are looking at changing the law so that it is possible to ensure that within six months those charged with corruption must be brought to book 
and sent to jail if they are found guilty. As a means of making sure that public resources are used for the Kenyan public and not for private uh, profit. As we look forward to further integrating public agencies into the securities market through privatization and welcoming more private sector listing, we remain dedicated to our goals of job creation and economic development crucial for realizing sustainable development goals and improving overall quality of life. I'm also glad to note that a flexible regulatory framework is now in place to support small and medium enterprise raise funds through the capital markets, and that the NSC, through the Unquoted Securities Platform, now has an SME capital raising platform. And I really want to encourage SMEs to take advantage of this platform and find resources, alternative sources of capital for them to expand uh, their horizon. Investor confidence has been sustained by the fact that the financial markets have remained resilient with stable microeconomic indicators. To maintain this trend, the government of Kenya is committed to entrenching a predictable business and economic environment through appropriate policy framework. I also appreciate the position of the securities market with the recognition of NSC as the best performing exchange in Africa at 44.43% dollar return in the first quarter this year. I remember when I made that statement somewhere Many people wanted to verify whether it was true. Because sometimes we have little faith in ourselves. And I want to encourage us that um, if we expect people to believe in our country, we must first believe in ourselves. We cannot expect people to believe in us if we have no faith in ourselves. And the confidence that we are going to generate in the securities exchange, those coming from outside Kenya will invest when they see us at the front investing in our own uh, companies. I'm very happy with what the uh, CEO of the exchange said, that we have more foreign investors investing in our products. That is a sign of confidence, yes. But that's also an encouragement to us that if others believe in us, we should believe in ourselves more. I think that that's really the message we should be, we should be, we should be carrying. Um, I, know, I know I have been accused, as uh, uh, the, the, the chair here said, of uh, traveling. And, and that's a fair accusation. The only unfairness in it is that many people believe I've been traveling as a tourist. <laughs> but the profile we enjoy today in Kenya is, a, is as a result of deliberate, intentional, positive profiling of our country. Because in any case, I am the chief marketer of our great country. And I will not be doing justice to Kenya if I don't give it the stature and profile that Kenya actually deserves. I am very proud that today our country is held in very high esteem in many parts of both our continent and globally because of the efforts we have done collectively as uh, the people of Kenya. And we must safeguard the place of our country, jealously, all of us, together. And I agree with uh, Lethome that um, whatever it is that we want to do as a country, we are a country that believes in freedom, we are a robust democracy, but we are also a country governed under the rule of law. It is good to be fearless. It is good to be leaderless but it is not good to be reckless and violent. We, we just have to be the country that we are all proud of. 
a proud democratic country governed by the rule of law. It is the minimum we can do for ourselves as a country. And I want to assure investors both here and I want to assure Kenyans that as a mandate, I will make sure, I will go out of my way to make sure that we are a stable country, to leverage on all our capabilities to secure the country and to provide an environment where each and every one of us can unlock our potential to make our country great. And we will make whatever sacrifices that are necessary for us to bring all our energies, all our efforts and ideas and synergy so that we can drive the collective good of the people of Kenya. Establishing a broad-based government is just that, so that nobody has an excuse, nobody has a reason to impede the progress of our nation, and we can harness all our capabilities, all our ideas, efforts, and energy in driving the country in a positive trajectory so that we can take Kenya where we all want it to be. And I am very happy that uh, as a country, we always emerge stronger and better, even as we face the challenges of nationhood. And um, together, I am very confident that we will move forward. I now declare the Lindsay Sukuk officially listed on the unquoted security platform USP of NSC 